Right, well, so ultimately this has been a long time in the making, uh, but I decided it's time to time to get onto this power data analysis because I just think this is the biggest hoax in the world of cycling. People just making up power data. Now, I think Nychaka is the worst at it, and I'm going to go through two examples. One of them to a power data, and one of them due to literally the wind, which is huge. So this is all his stuff. Steph Crass did whatever was for here. Cool, right? No one cares. So he says there was a slight headwind on this climb and that he did 6.09 ethylon watts per kilo. Now, I know what ethylon watts per kilo is. I do have a brain. Uh, lots of people trying to explain in my comment section. I don't know what it is. I'm pretty confident I do know what it is. Um, and it says it was making one of his best performances ever. So, obviously, I've already gone through why estimated watts per kilo are just wrong, mainly due to the fact the number of inaccuracies uh, from air pressure to air density... Um, to how that changes with altitude. I mean, is he, you know, what sort of intervals are we having for the change in air pressure over the time of uh, of the climb? Obviously, that's not being accounted for. What about rolling resistance? What about bike weight? What about rider weight? You know, there's so many variables that it, this job is almost impossible. But, you know, the wind is a large variable and, you know, it's variable due to the cars and traffic on the, on the race. Uh, but it's also variable because it could be a headwind or a tailwind. Now, he says it's a slight headwind. This is the most incorrect thing I've ever seen. Everyone was commenting that it was a tailwind. So this is just a screenshot, first of all. Uh, this wind, you know, you can see the flag. It's coming across here. Um, bit of a taily here, but more crosswind. But he is going, you know, as we see it from right to left. So anyway, okay, that's, you know, all good. So now we're going to have some videos. So this is kind of, like, oh, no, sorry, this again. This guy's waving the flag. Yep wind going that way so so far all content we have seen suggests tailwind potentially large tail now we've got a couple of videos to watch um as well so this is actually we don't need to hear the commentary on this one but you can see there's vingard going there's the flags there just in case you can see and then we really get a look at the right here look at those flags wow that looks like what a really big tailwind it's almost like there was a tailwind on the day so every single therefore as therefore every single one of his works cal kilo calculations is wrong and for me that makes me think okay well if he's lied about this or not taken into account then can you trust any of them and that that's really where that's really where it gets it for me so we'll go on to the next page again um this actually you want to listen to and indeed crass on that margin it uh, doesn't seem too bad to be fair sadly the the uh, the pictures have just gone back to uh finger go uh, not that I'm to see to get the uh, sorry, I actually, we didn't need to listen to Carlton Kirby. Sorry for uh, putting that across. But you could see there on the right, again, uh, if we look on, on these flags here, um, you know, you can see that is a tailwind. Uh, you know, it doesn't take a meteorologist to realise if flags blow in the same direction, we have tailwind. So already we've seen at least two options. And you can look, where is he going? He's going up here. So for this whole bit, it'll be net tailwind. So yeah, that's that's pretty big. Then we'll go over to Robbie McEwen because he also knows quite a lot about bike racing. So what was that? So now, no, now we'll watch and it with the whole flags. Home, Look Robbie. on the left. And no reason not to do what Master's doing. You see the flags on the side. He's got a tailwind going up the valley here. So nobody. As again noted, tailwind. So. Okay, we can say uh, the Tourmalet just made a mistake, whatever. So, but I think that's a big point for me. It's a big point that the concentration on small weather makes a massive difference on this, on these calculations. It's not that you said the headwind was a little bit too big or a little bit too small. You just you just got the one the wrong wind. Okay, so next we got um, we got the Angler now again. The Angler he said uh, Robert Harris did six point four three. Um, and this was good. So 6.4 is like really, really strong. So that's what Tal Gagan Hart uh, rumoured to have done up Pianca Valle in 2020 when him and uh, Jai, Jai Hindley and everyone went thermo. So it's really big what's because. So when you hear this, you kind of go, okay, yeah. Um, and then what, so what they said is that he did about 6.4 um, to, you know, to get close to Harris's time. Uh, and on the steep part, they did 6.75. Now, you know, 6.75 for 26 minutes is just a joke. Now, obviously, that's overestimated. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to realise that you're not doing 6.75 um, for 26 minutes in a race, mainly because that alone 
would be such a high climb performance. Like if that was a 20 minute silent finish, that would be like the most bonkers numbers ever. So that alone, you know, we, we know it's wrong. So, but we'll, we'll go into season more detail. Now this is Santiago Betrago's numbers. Now we do have to caveat that, okay, there are, you know, there are a lot of issues with using power meters, but I think, you know, it's a good base point. So Santiago Betrago, full reference, finished about one minute down on this, which obviously was made all in the second half. So his total, uh, you know, uh, power was six watts per kilo, 351. And I know he's less than 60 kilos, so you go, well, it's a long watts per kilo. But anyway, what that means uh, is, yeah, so he did six, and so he lost one minute at 0.4 watts per kilo. Now, you know, I've ridden my bike quite a lot, and I reckon that's not true on a 41, on a 40 minute climb, that 0.4 watts per kilo loses you one minute. Uh, but, you know, what's more interesting is the actual real steep part. So the steep part is where he actually lost you know, the minute he did 6.1. So if he's losing a minute in 24 minutes at 0.6 watts per kilo, there is something seriously wrong. So again, you're going to see that the numbers when you drill into them are just wrong. And there's, there's no, there's no, oh, you know, I did calculations. It's like, no, 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 It's just fake news. There is no other way of saying it. You, no one is doing 6.75 watts per kilo for 27 minutes, mid 40 minute climb in a grand tour. Because if they are, they're going to ride off from everyone. And everyone knows this because you li can literally look at the power data. And you could say, okay, why well, is the power meter day is slightly wrong? Okay, Sancho Butrago did 6.4. Still, like the power numbers would have to be so drastically under that uh, for it to have any bearing of the nine jacket calculations. And I think, you know, I've shown you he takes disregard for wind on the first case. The second case is pure wrong. Then we go on Twitter he says, you can't include the last 600 million in your calculations. He says, he still gets about six watts per kilo. It can't be correct. Someone else says 6.3, 6.4. So you can see it's all just carnage. Um, and then he says, you know, Petrago did uh, 59, 352. So for the steepest section, I 361. And then he says, very interestingly, maybe the steepness is, um, does something wrong with his calculations, which I think is probably true. Um, and then Nychak is just bold um, that saying his is correct. I just think, you know, what it goes to show me is the power data is completely useless. So just don't ignore it. Or just to completely ignore it. The estimated watts per kilo is just wrong. Um, I think the good thing to take into consideration is VAM and wind. After that, it's irrelevant. You know, you can see more or less what it's going to be. You know, if they did a fast time up the angler, you know it's going to be big. If they did a slow time and the VAM's not as crazy, okay, for sure. But my point is, is trying to compare generation to generation of climbers or even just, you know, year to year, season in season, when glaring errors are being made in these calculations, it just makes it pointless. But anyway, that's enough of my rant today. Uh, cheers for watching. Hope you'd enjoy. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one.